Alyssa, in this video, I am going to show you how to get your BN220 or BN220A, the version that doesn't have white or metallic option, uh, set up. So this is a little bit different. Um, and we what we are going to do is use Roland DG Connect. We are going to do this process every time that we need to load a new type of media. So that doesn't mean that you need to do this process every time you need to load media, just a brand new mini media. So right now, if I'm just loading a uh, generic vinyl, um, I'm going to set this profile up. However, the next time that I go to load the same generic vinyl, I don't need to go through all this. So this is really like an initial setup uh, type process. So let's uh, do this. The first thing that I'm going to do is show you how to load this media roll uh, into the BN2. What you can see is it's obviously a front load, which is a great feature of the machine because you don't need to get behind the machine, which means that you need a smaller, like kind of working space. This machine is tall it's much taller than the bn20a or bn20 however the bn2 is not nearly as deep and you can keep it pressed against the wall which is perfect so you actually end up with a smaller required footprint or footprint area because it's front loading which is one of the updates uh to this new model all right so let's get started and we will get all the way through to the end of the video where you will be ready to do your first print and cut on your new roland bn2 Okay, so you have your roll of media here, and it is hanging over the front like this, okay? So what you're going to do is you are actually going to pull it this way, and there's two, there are two arrows underneath here, and that is where um, the sheet is going to go. So we will place the material up, and what it's going to do is it's going to come across the top come through the top, okay? Now, it's really important that you listen for the two beeps. This bar needs to be completely up so that the material can run through underneath the rollers. Now, you're gonna listen, you're gonna pull, you hear that vacuum? Once the vacuum comes on, you're gonna pull it a little bit more until you hear that second beep, okay? Once you hear that, you wanna make sure that this roller here is under is on one of these blue spots okay this is any position that this left roller can be on this is an eight uh, 20 inch material so we want it to be all the way over this roller here is stationary where the blade is set you want to make sure it's pressed completely to the right and can't go any further once you've got that you're going to press take the uh, lever bar and press that down and the vacuum will turn off okay then you want to make sure that this is taunt okay so watch here it's, you can see it's pulling it not too taunt that it's going to buckle this but taunt enough that it is not um uh set like sagging essentially all right then what you're going to do is you're going to return to the utility okay so here is uh the dg connect and this is basically your central uh, hub for everything that is going to help you run your BN2, whether that's a BN220A or BN220. So what you can see is that my machine is currently listed as standby. Now, the BN2 utility is where you want to go when you are going to uh, load a new material or begin a new print and cut. Okay, so we're going to click open. And this is the utility that is going to open. So the first thing that we want to do, you can see that it doesn't have an option here for cutting or anything. It's currently telling me this is the status. These are the directions. It's currently telling me I need to load media, which we did. So we want to click setup. After setup is add is um, opens, then we have this second window. Now, um, if this is your first time loading a media, you need to add the type of media that you're using. I am have already added the media, but I'm going to show you how. To I'm, I am going to show you how to do this. So what we're going to do is we have, you have see all of these options that you have up here, uh, change media, media, blah, 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 blah. So plus sign is going to be to add the media. So name the type of media that you're using. So I'm just going to, to name this media um, C, uh, GCVP2 just so we can distinguish it. Okay. And what that's going to do is load them. Now it's telling me what I need to do next. Load the media, which we did. Make sure the loading lever is lowered. Click start to set up. And then we're going to click OK. Now you can hear it's telling me, you can probably hear that vacuum. And it's telling me that I have the 
front cover open, which I do. So this is really good because it tells you everything you need to do. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to close this lever and it's going to uh, sense that. And now that you, now you can see that in the utility, it is telling me that the setup is in progress. You see the print head moving back and forth. It is finding the width of the material. It's asking me what I am going to do with this type of material. So this is a printable material. I'm going to select that I want to print only or print and cut and click OK. Now, this is really important. This is what you are going to do to begin all of um, the basically calibrations. You do not need to do this every time um, you print and cut. You only need to do this when you are working with a new material for the first time. Okay, so you're just going to follow through what you want to do. Output basically means print. Okay, move is you're going to move the print head um, or the cutting position. Sheet cut is it's literally going to cut the sheet from the roll. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to tell it that we want to print a nozzle check, okay? If you're not sure how to do anything, you can click, you can view the, the video to see how to do it. So check, check the print head um, discharge conditions. Click output to print the test pattern. So we're going to do that first. Now, we need to wait for the heater to warm up. Okay, so just wait for it, give it a couple of minutes, let it warm up, and then um, it will begin printing the uh, nozzle check. Now, by I assume that by this this point, if you have a you know six or seven thousand dollar print cut machine, you're familiar with how to do nozzle checks and how to read nozzle checks. Um, but if you need a refresher, a nozzle check, as you can see here, is this basically grid pattern showing you how each of the cartridges ink cartridges is printing. Um, what you want is something that has, that is not missing any nozzles. So missing any nozzles means that there are little spaces between where another line should be. You can see it, it's highlighted here, showing you that a nozzle is missing here. If a nozzle or a line um, in the print, in the nozzle check is missing, you then want to do a cleaning. So we're not, we don't know yet if we need to do a cleaning. I can pretty much assure you that I probably don't since this is actually the second time that I'm doing this setup um, for the sake of this video. But I will tell you that you are going to evaluate the nozzle check and then you are going to determine the next steps. But we first have to wait for that nozzle check to print. Okay, so the, the nozzle check printed. It's difficult to see, so I will lift this, and what we can see here is the nozzle check has printed. Now, it's, if you are having trouble seeing it, which it depends probably on your eyesight and the position of your printer, what you can do is actually move that out. But I'm just going to leave it here so and evaluate it from here. Okay, so this nozzle check is not missing any nozzles, so I don't need to do any type of cleaning, okay? Now it's telling me, check whether there is any dot drops, nozzles that are missing. To eliminate the dot drops, perform a head cleaning. We don't need to do that. If you did have missing nozzles, you are going to click execute for normal cleaning. Um, you can also do a manual cleaning, which if it's a brand new machine, you should not have to do that. You also have these other types of cleanings, medium and power. That's basically if you are um, continuously missing nozzles or if you are missing a whole lot, um, always start though with a normal cleaning. Now, one thing that I wish that this had was basically like a one, two, three. This looks like it's a paragraph. It's basically like do this step first, do this step second, do this step third. So keep that in mind. We're going to click OK and it's going to move us to the next step. So we want to select the media adjustment. We're just going to tell it we want to do it automatic. So it's going to say, okay, the, fo the following items will be executed. Sensor adjustment, feed correction, uh, media gap adjustment. Click okay to print the test pattern. A printing area with a width of 300 millimeters is required. Okay, go ahead, do your thing. It is, the, so much of this setup is automatic that we want to just let it do it, let it guide us through. Okay, so it's telling me 
you know, it's working right now. If I want to pause it, I can. I really want to avoid trying to pause it. Okay, it's telling me the new media setup is complete. So that's perfect. So now it is possible, as it's telling me, to output media. So some of the verbiage is a little bit confusing or can be a little bit confusing, but so you know, it is now ready and loaded. So let's just go back. Let's close this out. And I want to show you, it's going to ask me, do you want to exit? Yes, I do. I want to show you what's going to happen the next time you open up the utility and you are trying to um, print on this type of media. So, so again, it's telling me that I need to load the media. This is as if we had no media loaded, which we obviously do. We're going to click setup. Now it's going to ask me which one of these are you using? So eventually you will probably have, you know, I don't know, however many types of material you use, whether that's HTV, a holographic banner material, paper, photo, whatever you're using, you'll have a media uh, for each of them. So you're going to select the one that you're using and you will click OK. And then it's going to tell you, load the media. Make sure the loading lever is, this is, you know, what we already went through. We're going to click OK. It is going to check to make sure that the, that the media has been loaded correctly. So we don't need to go through all of that nozzle check and all of those other checks that we did before in all of our subsequent uh, prints or prints and cuts. We just need to do that um, the very first time. So now it's telling me that the output is possible. So in this case, now what I need to do is I need to go over to VersaWorks. So at this point, I can still, I can launch VersaWorks right from um, DG Connect. So, I, so what you can see is that now, and I have multiple BNs obviously, but the BN2 is telling me that it is ready to print. So now what I'm going to do is I have the ability to just import my um, the first design as I normally would. So I'll have another video on that, but I did want to show you how to get to this point because if you are used to using the um, original BN or BN20A, the process, uh, the workflow is a little bit different. So once you get to this point, you are now ready. Now, in between um, the utility, which I'll go back to here, and uh, VersaWorks, you actually can use Flexi Designer with the BN2 to add cut lines. So if you're doing this in order, really Flexi should be in between. Um, but if you are going to use Flexi Designer to add your cut lines, you can actually print and cut directly from Flexi. Flexi is included in the BN2 and B BN2, or excuse me, Flexi is included in the BN220 and the BN220A. All right, so you'll have that ability. You won't need to use any other type of software, uh, whether that's Illustrator or Affinity Designer or even Silhouette Studio um, to create your cut lines. You can do that all within Flexi Designer and there's a special uh, VersaWorks uh, edition that you can do that. And I will have videos on all of that as well. And that's it. So you are now ready to begin doing your first uh, print and cut or cut or just print on your Roland BN2. So you've got, uh, you did your media uh, nozzle check. You did uh, the other checks that are needed. This is all done. And then all you need to do uh, is get ready to print. Again, we're going to do that process, that like 10 or 15 minute process every time we use a new type of media. So the next time, if I am going to use, say, holographic, I, and I have never used that before on this machine, I will have to go through that process again. But once you get all those profiles built, it's uh, really easy. So I will show you the next video, which is going to be the first print cut. If you guys are looking for uh, best bundles for BN2, I have obviously um, links for that recommendations in the description below. I also have... Um, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one help with your BN2, VersaWorks, or anything like that, I, also, I offer that through my uh, subscription uh, website, Silhouette U. Don't worry, it's more than Silhouette, obviously. Uh, we've definitely grown since we launched that in 2016. So if you're looking for that, go ahead. I also have uh, cut files, everything that you need with your BN2 to really get going, for whether it's for business, it's really a business machine. So if you're a crafter and you have this, lucky you, but this is a business machine. So I have everything that you will need all in the description below. All right, guys, make sure if you're not, you subscribe to uh, all our notifications so you don't miss a thing. See you soon.